Hello, and welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I reviewed the first place we visited in Israel, Caesarea. So next up on the tour around the Promised Land is Megiddo. Now the full name in Hebrew is Har Megiddo, Har meaning hill, mound, or mountain. It is also called Tel Megiddo, with Tel meaning a hill or mound of multiple civilizations built on top of one another over a span of centuries. It is believed that 26 civilizations lived on this site. When Megiddo is mentioned in the Old Testament, the Bible is either referring to the valley or plain of Megiddo, also called the Jezreel Valley, or the settlement of Megiddo, which is situated on top of a mound overlooking the valley. This was a very important area in the ancient world because this was one of the key trade routes that people would take when traveling between Mesopotamia, which is modern-day Iraq, in the northeast, and Egypt in the southwest. Now let's look at some of the sites from the settlement of Megiddo. The following are Canaanite ruins from the pre-Israelite times around the 15th century BC. Here is a water reservoir where the inhabitants would go down the steps and fetch water. Here is the city gate from the Canaanite period. This is the remains of a Canaanite castle. And here are the remains of a Canaanite temple. Findings from after Israel conquered the Promised Land. Here is the city gate from the Israelite period that was most likely from King Solomon in the 10th century BC, although some archaeologists believe it was from either the time of King Ahab, which was 9th century BC, or as late as King Jeroboam II in the 8th century BC. Here I am standing in the corner of the northern palace with the Valley of Megiddo right behind me. Here is a huge public grain silo from the time of King Jeroboam II, which would be the 8th century. And one of the remarkable feats of engineering, this is a water system of Megiddo. This is believed to have been built by King Solomon, but improved upon by King Ahab. It was a 115 foot shaft going down to a 262 foot long tunnel to retrieve water from the spring just outside the settlement's walls. In the event of a siege, the people of Megiddo would still have access to water. Now, let's first look at the scriptures referring to the settlement of Megiddo. So to begin, Joshua chapter 12, verse 21, Megiddo is first mentioned in the list of kings Joshua conquered when taking the promised land. In Judges chapter 1, verse 27, the tribe of Manasseh did not drive out all the Canaanites living in Megiddo. In 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 12, King Solomon set up a district governor over Megiddo. In 1 Kings 9, verses 15, King Solomon later fortified Megiddo. In 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 27, we see Judah's king, Ahaziah, who was wounded and later died at Megiddo. When Ahaziah, king of Judah, saw what had happened, he fled up the road to Beth Hagan. Jehu chased him, shouting, Kill him too! They wounded him in his chariot on the way up to Ger near Ibliam, but he escaped to Megiddo and died there. Now, before we get into the scriptures that make reference to the valley or plain of Megiddo, let's take a look at the landmarks that you can see when looking into the valley. Looking towards the northeast, you will see Nazareth, the hometown of Jesus, which will be my next review. A little bit to the right, you will see Mount Tabor. And then next is the hill of Moray. And then lastly, looking slightly southeast, you can see Mount Gilboa. Now, in Judges chapter 4, we find Barak and the judge Deborah fought against and defeated the commander of the Canaanites, Sisera. Barak came down Mount Tabor to fight Sisera in Judges chapter 4, verses 14, which makes the battle take place in the valley of Megiddo. And in Judges chapter 5, verse 19, Megiddo is specifically mentioned in the Song of Deborah. Now, another event that happened in the plain of Megiddo in 2 Chronicles 35, 22, Josiah, however, would not turn away from him, but disguised himself to engage him in battle. He would not listen to what Nico had said at God's command, but went to fight him in the plain of Megiddo. And then, in Judges chapter 7, we see Gideon attacking the Midianites who were camped in the valley near Moray. Judges chapter 7, verse 1. Early in the morning, Jerobel, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moray. 
Now, Mount Gilboa is recorded in the Bible as the place where Saul and his sons died fighting the Philistines in 1 Samuel chapter 31. But I believe this would not have happened on the side of the mountain facing Megiddo, but actually on the other side of the mountain facing the Jordan River, being that Saul and his sons' dead bodies were hung on the walls of Beth Shan, which is also called Beth Shean. And northwest of Megiddo, which is not pictured, is Mount Carmel. And we were so bummed that we couldn't get to see that. This is where Elijah battled the 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 16 through 46. Now, in verse 46, it says, The power of the Lord came on Elijah, and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Well, when you go into verse 42 prior to this, he is on his knees praying on top of Mount Carmel. So this means that Elijah would have ran east through the valley of Megiddo and thus passing the settlement of Megiddo to get to Jezreel. Now, the word Megiddo is not mentioned in the New Testament. Can you guess why? As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Megiddo is a Hebrew name for the settlement in the valley. Well, the New Testament was written in Greek. So when you read Revelation chapter 16, verse 16, you see the word most familiar with our culture today when discussing the end of the world, Armageddon. Armageddon is a Greek transliteration of the Hebrew word Har-Megiddo. Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Now, is this specifically where the final battle will be? Zechariah 14 verses 1 through 4 indicates the final battle will be at Jerusalem. And in Joel chapter 3 verse 2, it refers to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which some Jewish traditions believe that would be the Kidron Valley, which is on the east side of Jerusalem, separating the city from the Mount of Olives. Now, whether the final battle takes place at the Valley of Megiddo, or these kings and their armies just all gather here and then march a day's journey south to Jerusalem, the gathering of these kings takes place at the pouring of the sixth bowl, which is virtually near the end of the Great Tribulation. All in all, the Valley of Megiddo is very beautiful, very green and fertile today. But at some point in the future, its beauty will fade as the final moments of those who have rejected Jesus gather together for one final battle before the millennial reign of Christ begins. So, this concludes my review of Megiddo. Until next time, thank you for watching and God bless.